whatever reason, uh, Danny Gallagher, uh, there was something that he just likened to me about whatever, but when I, need, when I needed some special assistance, not that any Marine wouldn't do that, but Danny was just special. Because Danny, and I'm gonna explain a couple of situations that Danny did, and, and because of that, I'm here today. If Danny didn't do those things, I wouldn't have been here today. In fact, I wouldn't have made my 19th or perhaps not even my 20th birthday. Um, but just, just, so you, just so you have an understanding of how important that person was and that God put that person in my life to be able to, for whatever God's reasons for wanting me to have you know, this lifetime that I have had, to be where I am today from where I was then to where I am now. And Danny was a special person that God put in my life. Uh, the first situation, we were going out about four o'clock in the morning, it was very dark, very no moon, and we were gonna have to cross this gorge, and it was a blowing out bridge, and um, and there was there was this thin railing that you could walk on, but that was it. Well, by the time this happened, I was already losing my vision from an injury to my head that had occurred a few months earlier. And when I got over there and realized what I was going to have to try to do, I, I did no way. I knew I'd fall. I said, I knew I'd fall in that gorge, and there was just no way I was going to make that board, you know, crossing over that bowling up bridge with this little skinny railing. And I couldn't even see the railing in that kind of light. And that couldn't really happen. But um, so I just thought, you know what, forget it. I'm not going. Danny was across this. He had crossed the gorge, and he was on the other side, and the word began to pass that Smitty wasn't going to be coming over, that he's going to stay in this village. Now, the village was supposed to be an unfriendly village, so I, I was in a predicament where I could try to cross that gorge and fall in my death, or I'd stay in the village and try to take my chances with whoever was going to be there that might try to harm me. Um, the word got up ahead that Smitty wasn't coming, he's staying. And Danny, hearing this, recrossed the gorge, came to me and told me, Smitty, we gotta cross the gorge, you can't stay back. And those of you that all know my personality and know how stubborn I could be and tough I could be about that, even at 18 years of age, I said, no, Danny, I can't. If I try to cross that, I'm gonna fall. I might as well take my chances with the people in this village because if I cross that, I don't fall. He said, no, Smitty, we're gonna cross it together. We're gonna go one foot together at a time. If I get emotional, it's because 41 years can go by, but the feelings about these things don't ever go away. I can trust that 41 years it hasn't gone away. But anyway, so we did, boot to boot, we crossed that skinny little piece of metal to get across that gorge to get to the other side. That was the first situation. Second situation, we were on night patrol so many months later, and I was at the tail end of the squad, the rest of the platoon had gotten across the, the, the dike that separated the, the rice paddies. In the process of going over, and Danny was already, he was already across already, he was already in, in a safe position, and the machine gun opened up on him. In the process, I slipped and fell into the, into the rice paddy. The rice paddy was about four and a half feet deep of water, and when my boots hit the bottom, it was very, very muddy and sticky, and I couldn't get my boots out very well, and the machine gun was firing at me, and I was trying to get back up on the dike, and I was having a, a lot of trouble. And uh, lo and behold, there comes Danny. He comes running across that dike. <sighs> Under fire, knowing darn well that he was putting himself in jeopardy to try to help me out and get me out of the mess I was in. He reaches down and grabs my flak jacket and manages to pull me out of the mud and get me up on that dike. And as I'm looking to my left, I'm seeing the tracer rounds of the machine gun coming right at us. And I still, to this day, when I think about that situation, I still can't figure out how they missed us. I mean, I could see the tracers coming because it was dark and I could see the tracers coming at us, but I couldn't figure out why we weren't getting hit. And then we proceeded you know, to, to run across the rest of the dike to get to the safety. That was number two. Number three, I was nearing the end of my tour. Danny had gotten there a little bit after me, so he was gonna be around for a while longer. And a few weeks to go on my tour, we were, our unit was asked to go on another operation into an area that uh, was supposed to be cleared. You know, there was possible VC, and 
But what happened when they got, you know, what happened before we got, before we left, uh, each platoon had to leave back somebody in the platoon in the rear area to help out in the rear area while the rest of the three platoons were going out on this, on this mission. And, uh, and so when he came, I was in the first platoon and Danny was in the first platoon. When he came, when the lieutenant came to the first platoon and asked for volunteers to stay back, nobody would volunteer. Nobody, would, nobody wanted to stay back. So he said, the lieutenant said, well, he goes, I'm going to leave you guys alone and I'm going to go, you know, and come back. Uh, I'll give you so many minutes to figure out who's staying back and, and so on. You guys decide amongst yourselves how this is going to work and I'll come back and get it. We discussed and nobody would volunteer. Nobody wanted to stay back. Unbeknownst to me, Danny and another Marine decided that, you know what, Smitty is short. He's having trouble seeing. I, mean, I began losing my vision in Vietnam after my head injuries uh, so many months back, you know, March and April. And here, this was January of the next year. And uh, those two guys, uh, those two Marines, went to the lieutenant and told them about me and that I was having trouble seeing and getting around and doing. Not that they were complaining about what they had to do to help me get by, because. All Marines do that for all Marines, no matter what. But they said, no one's going to volunteer. We slice Smitty. And uh, we think he should stay back. He's got this situation. He's short. There were other people that was about as short as I was. But anyway, the lieutenant came back and said that I was going to be staying back. And of course, I got very belligerent. I disrespected him, which I should have never done. Uh, but I was upset because I had made it that far. I had two more weeks to go, and I didn't want to leave my guys. Because as we learned in Vietnam, the more experienced Marines that had gotten through everything, no matter how, they were the ones that helped the younger ones coming in, how to survive and get by, you know, and just make it through. And. Uh, of course, I got upset about this, and I said, sir, I said, I'm not going to stay back. I've gone this far. I am not going to leave this platoon with two weeks to go on this last mission. And of course, he's, as, as all officers will tend to do, he got very steadfast, and he just flat out told me, he goes, I'm not asking you, Smitty, because I'm, I'm giving you a direct order. You don't have a choice in this. Of course. After that, I realized that I pushed too far and that I needed to step back a piece here. And I said, sir, uh, all right, sir, I'm, not, I'm doing this reluctantly only because you've given me a direct order, not because I want to do this. Regardless of my being angry or upset, uh, I still felt I needed to be military. I needed to do what the military taught me to do. And, and so I did. A couple of days later, I was written a letter to Danny to make sure to tell him to keep, to keep safe and do what he needs to do to be okay. And unfortunately, that letter never got to him because uh, the day before the letter was taken out, a, a booby trap was set off by another Marine and Danny was killed. I lived with that for a long, long time. It was a very tough thing for me because I know what Danny had meant to me, and I felt that I couldn't be there for him when he couldn't use me. <sighs> Forty-one years ago, and I'm still dealing with it. But uh, thanks to God, I'm dealing with it. 